My name is Mackenzie from the College Express team, and today I'm joined by Eric Enlick from Top College Consultant. Eric, do you want to introduce yourself? Sure. Uh, thanks for having me, Mackenzie. I'm a clinical psychologist and college admissions consultant. I work with students all over the world uh, applying to college and grad school and help them in the college selection process, college readiness, and uh, essays, college applications, and uh, also work a fair amount with students with challenges, disabilities, and so on, who have struggles with college readiness. Awesome. So Eric recently wrote a blog for College Express called How to Know If You're Ready for College. You can find the link to this blog in the description below. To help, he's here today to help us learn more about getting ready for college. Um, so Eric agreed to do a quick Q&A with us so let's get started. Eric, in your blog, some of the key skills you mentioned that are helpful for college students are self-awareness, self-advocacy, and self-management. Can you explain what students and parents can be doing while in high school to prepare these skills for college? Sure, I'd be happy to. So those are three categories to kind of break down all of the many college readiness skills and kind of simplify it a little bit into those three categories. And uh, self-awareness is something that um, we kind of develop over time, hopefully. And that could be awareness, for example, of how are you with your study skills? How are you in terms of keeping up with assignments, getting thing, keeping track of them, getting them done on time? Also, how good are you at, at certain subjects versus other subjects? And then self-awareness about your reaction to stress, I think, is important, too. When, when things get, when you encounter big changes, big stressors in life, do you, how do you handle those? Do you respond by attacking the problem? Do you run away from it? Do you get depressed or anxious? Knowing all these things about yourself is really helpful. So you can kind of look at, well, you've got, you got to look at yourself honestly. Um, am I good at keeping keeping up with my assignments? Am I good at certain subjects? Are there certain subjects that, that I really struggle with and, and the different areas that I mentioned? And so if you are not sure, if you're like, I don't really know what I'm good at, I'm not really sure how I respond to stress, well then ask people who know you well. That could be a counselor at school or a private counselor, could be your parents, um, and get feedback from other people on um, to build up your self-awareness. So that's that's the one first piece. The self-advocacy, that's kind of starting to do things for yourself and speak up for yourself. And um, look for opportunities to do that. Are you speaking up for yourself or are other people jumping in or are you just kind of letting stuff happen? So that would be kind of being more active in class, going up to your teachers if and speaking to them after class or raising your hand during class um, to be an active participant. You're going to be expected in many classes in college to be an active participant. <clears throat> Unless, depending on your major and the, the class, of course, there are some classes in some colleges that might have hundreds of students. Um, but if you're in a small liberal arts college and you're taking humanities courses or small courses, you're going to be expected to participate actively. So good time to start practicing that in school and to ask for things that you need whether that's from your teachers, from staff at school, if there are things that you need, um, make sure that it's you, the student, who's asking for them and not having your parents jump in and, and always do that. Um, <clears throat> and then um, also self-management, that is kind of uh, managing different aspects of your time, like time management, I'm sorry, managing different aspects of your life, like time management. Um, so, Kind of look at your day starting at the beginning of the day how do you get up in the morning do you do that as a student completely independently or do your parents help get you up in the morning um, are you organizing the stuff you need to take to school are you getting your meals ready are you doing your laundry are you making your doctor's appointments are you picking up your own medication at the drugstore if you happen to be on medication and if your parents are do stepping in and doing many things these things for you then look for opportunities to start to kind of move the needle and get the student doing those things themselves. Uh, or if you're the parent, look for opportunities to kind of step back and say, hey, here's the number, why don't you make the phone call yourself? Uh, if an issue comes up that, that needs to be resolved, um, let the student take the first crack at it. So look for those opportunities to have the, the parent step back and the student step forward 
whether it's something like doing an errand and picking something up at the store or the pharmacy, making an appointment, um, speaking to a teacher or a staff person at school, managing time. And if time management, for example, is, is the big challenge, then look for systems, start to build systems in where you, the student, can be doing that independently, where it's not teachers and parents and staff at school kind of keeping you on track. And there's lots of apps to help you with time management. There's lots of programs. There's lots of systems that people develop, whether it's something as you know low tech as a whiteboard or something more high tech like Google Keep. Um, look for those systems. Consult with people who are good at with time management, who know those kinds of strategies, who can help you build them so that when you're on your own in college, having to do all this stuff yourself, you will um, not have to start with square one. Yeah, definitely. And it builds your confidence when you're in college mm -hmm. to learn how to just communicate with everybody, uh, especially your professors, to just start that in high school. Mm -hmm. Great. So one of the things you mentioned in the blog, one of the options students can do to acquire some of these skills is maybe taking a gap year before college. Can you elaborate on what students can be doing on their own during this time if they do decide to take a gap year to stay productive and press colleges and build their skills? Sure, absolutely. So a gap year, we're just talking about a year between high school and college. It is wide open. It could absolutely, if a student has something in mind that they are dying to do, whether that's working at a certain job or traveling the world or writing a book or creating um, you know, starting a company, um, you can pursue that activity that you have in mind. If you don't, then think about the things that you need to work on or the things that you would like that you're, you're interested in. Uh, sometimes, again, you know, a student has to work because for financial reasons, they need to contribute to their college fund. So sometimes there, there's constraints on, on what the student can be doing. But if it's absolutely wide open, um, it should be a productive year. It shouldn't be just, you know, hanging around and watching TV. Um, that's not going to help you get more ready for college. Um, working at a job is absolutely a great option. Um, even during the pandemic, there's many different things students can do, whether it's paid or volunteer. Some students start their own businesses, like, you know, babysitting, dog walking, lawn mowing. Um, sometimes it's figuring out how your interest connects to organizations that are already out there. So if you're, let's say, passionate about animals, maybe you find a way to help out an animal shelter and use the skills that you're good at. So if you're great with social media, maybe, and you're helping out a nonprofit, maybe you're helping build their social media pages. So start with your skills and your interests and look for ways to connect to the world and um, help other organizations and other people out there as well as building up your skills. Yes, and there's a lot of great gap year programs out there. You can find them on College Express. I know you listed mm -hmm. a few in your blog. Um, so those can also be a great way to keep your brain, your mind sharp while taking sure. that mm -hmm. off. It's not yeah. just like a big if you, Yeah, if you have the money to, to pay for a gap year program, there's gap year programs covering almost anything you can imagine. Um, and the, the Gap Year Association and other you know, websites like yours certainly can help you kind of find or search through those programs. Definitely. And some of them are focused on college readiness too. So if the specific issue for you is, you know, you're not independent enough, you're not ready to handle the um, time management, the uh, academics, there are programs focused on helping you become more college ready. Of course. And our last question today is, what would you say to a student reading this or watching this video who is entering college this year, not sure if they're ready, especially pandemic graduates who had a strange end of senior year and with the upcoming semester looking so uncertain. Mm -hmm. Well, I think by this point in the year, most students have already sort of made a decision, made a commitment one way, either they're starting college or they're not. Um, some colleges start today or next week. So um, that's kind of a foregone conclusion. <laughs> if, um, you know, if you're in a position where you still have time to make a decision on deferring, um, usually you have to do that well in advance. If you, uh, you can always reach out to the college and explore whether that's an option. Um, if you're in a situation where you're starting but you don't feel ready, then it's gonna be sort of looking at what are those skills 
and where can you get help to, to work on those things. So again, to use the time management example, there are executive function coaches who can help you work on that or assistive technology uh, coaches who can help you find apps and programs to help you um, be more successful in college. If it's an emotional issue, you can probably get access to free counseling at your college to help you, especially with that adjustment period. It's a big step to go from high school to college. You've already gone through other steps like going through middle school to high school, which may have felt like a big step, um, but this is a really different in terms of independence. So it's okay to reach out and ask for help. <clears throat> in some cases, people are doing it in kind of, you know, a gradual way, like starting by living at home and going to a community college. So sometimes there's kind of a gradual way to do it. Um, and uh, sometimes folks need to take time off too, which is fine, whether it's a gap year or um, another arrangement. Yeah, definitely give yourself, I think, you know, at least three to four weeks to adjust, especially if you're moving onto campus. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of kids might be staying home right now, but if you are moving onto campus, you may be homesick or not used to living with a roommate and just give yourself two weeks right. to adjust before make any rash. Yeah, decisions. assume that it's going to take time, That assume that, that you will be homesick or that it will be a little overwhelming at first and that that will fade in time. And you're probably gonna go through an orientation for your college. Pay attention at the orientation. They're gonna tell you about lots of resources. At the time, you might be like, yeah, yeah, who cares about all that stuff? But you might realize later on that you need it. So listen, take notes, um, you know, gather that information because if you need a student success center, uh, a learning support center, the counseling center, there are so many resources at most colleges um, if you're struggling, go to the tutoring center, go to the learning support center, go to the disability center, the counseling center, and say, hey, what can you do to help me because I'm feeling a little overwhelmed. And even if they, or go to your RA, if you live in, in a residence hall, um, the RA will be able to point you to those resources. And if you end up in the wrong office, they will tell you where you need to go to get those supports. There's lots of supports. Colleges don't want you to drop out. They want you to succeed and they will give you the supports to help you make that happen. Well, great. Thank you so much for joining us today. You're I welcome. I helped everyone learn a little bit more about getting ready for college, college preparedness. If you want to read more, again, Eric's blog is linked below. And if you'd like to learn more about the top college consultants, you can find, you can find the link to their site below. Thanks again, Eric. Thanks, Mackenzie. Have a good day. You too. Bye.